My name's Matt Landau, and this is Unlocked, Season 6, Magic Zones. This episode's brought to you by Point Central, the leader in smart home automation, and Breezeway, a property care and operations platform. Both of these companies receive VRMB Keystone Awards, and you'll hear in our conversation today why they are so fantastic. Eddie Gray is the housekeeping and laundry manager at Newman Daily Resort Properties in Florida. As a marketing podcast, we don't focus on back of the house stuff like maintenance or housekeeping nearly enough. But in this interview, Eddie explains why it's arguably the biggest moving part of any successful vacation rental business. Eddie's figured out that in order to do a consistently great job in these departments, you need to both embrace technology and exercise the fine art of checklists and delegating processes. This is gonna be one of those podcasts we ask you to share, assuming you like it, with teammates to ensure that the nearly 20 years of vacation rental wisdom and discoveries that Eddie's got, they can help your business soar. Let's do this. A normal morning for me, I'm actually uh, t- taking care of my grandmother. So a normal morning for me uh, is to get my grandmother situated about 8 a.m., uh, get her breakfast situated, and then um, I get myself ready for work, and then I actually head out to work as well um, after I get her all situated as I help take care of her um, at this time, and that's my morning. And this is in, in Destin? Do you live in Destin? I live in Fort Walton Beach, you know, which is a... Okay. Not a major commute, but some traffic can be heavy. So the commute from Fort Walton could be from 20 minutes to 40 minutes some morning, 45 minutes some mornings to get to work. Uh, it is a commute there from Fort Walton to Destin. I have a, a, a group that I swim with here in Miami. And there's one guy that he's not even in the vacation rental industry, but he listens to this podcast <laughs> like religiously. And he said to me, who are you interviewing today? I said, Eddie Gray. I said, he's like the center of the vacation rental universe. And this guy was like, what? (laughs) Tell me more. And I said, well, basically, I believe vacation rentals are the future of travel. And this guy, Eddie, he's based in an epicenter of tourism for the United States, one of the absolute top uh, destinations in the country. And even more specifically, he specializes in probably the most pivotal variable of a great vacation rental company. And that is the the housekeeping stuff. And the guy was like, Oh my gosh, I can't wait to listen to this one. (laughs) (laughs) So that that's my little introduction for you, Eddie. I don't know if you've ever been introduced that way, but I I like it. That was awesome. What happened like before your vacation rental journey? Because I I think it's cool for people to hear. We all have these pre vacation rental lives. Yeah, my, my my journey my journey before Newman Daily Resorts uh, in the vacation industry. I worked a summer hire job after um, college. I came home and worked a summer hire job on Eglin Air Force Base, and I was hired to work at uh, in base housing. So I was in charge of doing the pre and final inspections for the military family. Uh, The pre inspection, I would go in and have a list to show them these are the things they must do before they move out and PCS the military rental property they resided in. Um, Then once they did their pre inspection, I will set up a final inspection with that military family. Then I will go to their rental, their home on base or off base quarters. And I will do a final inspection based off the government guidelines of cleaning in terms of what I've learned now, it's similar to a deep clean. It's a move out clean. And they had, it was a white glove inspection, your window ledges, uh, the oven doors behind the fridge, fridge sills, you name it, they had to have it clean. If they put up their own fence, it had to be removed before they could PCS. So I was the person that kept them from either PCSing or staying on that base a little bit longer. (laughs) Um, So that got me in the introduction level of liking the act, uh, actual job of being an inspector. So I did that for roughly two years. And then the government of England Air Force Base decided to go privatization, where they were no longer going to rent out or their homes or provide homes for the military family. They were going to privatize to an outsource management company. So once that came about, I was actually a term employee. Um, I went ahead and 
So you know what? I'm losing my benefits. I'm going to lose pay, and it's not guaranteed the next company that takes over this contract that I will make the same pay or have benefits. So I began to look for a similar job, and I came across through Kelly Services. They were hiring a temp agency was hiring for a vacation rental inspector. Had you heard about vacation rentals before that? Never. Never, ever in my life knew about it. Never heard. I've always stayed at a hotel. I'm from Fort Walton. I'm local. So I never did a lot of local condo or rental homes. My family have always traveled outside of our area to go travel for vacation. So I've never even stayed in a condo. I was 20, 21, 22 at the time. So I applied for the job and um, got interviewed and got hired by our owner, operator of Neiman Daily. Jeannie Daly hired me as a quality assurance inspector. So once I got hired there, um, I put in the work, I learned and learned, and um, they saw a lot of potential in me. So that, you know, I was actually the quality insurance inspector. That position was geared towards all of our outside houses of cleaning the barbecue grills, uh, making sure the pool decks are clean, also inspecting as well, um, light maintenance as well in that position. So I worked my way up from that position to be an inspector within two years. So that's where the transition happened from being um, for working for the military to getting hired on for the vacation rental company. So after 90 days probation, our owner hired me uh, as a salary position. And I've been there ever since, 17 years now. Started in the vacation rental industry at 22 years old. Wow. Um, there's a lot of challenges and obstacles I faced um, in the industry of learning it. And I just absorbed everything around me um, and just working with an awesome owner that saw the potential in me and the drive that she always promoted teamwork. And one thing that kept me driven was that the owner operator um, would work closely with us in, on weekends and Saturday. And I was so impressed that this owner that owned this company would come out and housekeep in the lowest part of the company and, and, and would help in the laundry, will help clean, would help do whatever it took to help this department. So I realized then this is the right place to be. I'm not going anywhere. No matter what challenges happen here, I'm never going to quit. My grandfather, he instilled in me, never be a quitter. You know, someone would have to fire you first. That was always his attitude to me. So I learned that at a young age. So um, I stuck it out and I became the housekeeping manager after my seventh year there. Um, my owner sent me to Dale Carnegie leadership course and, and as well, just to, to, to groom me to be a manager and to have those extra tools. And she invested in me. And that was one thing that just, you know what, if I was going to invest this money and time in me, I'm never, this is the right place, you know, and, and my biggest attribute was customer service. I love going out to greet the family at home um, with issues they might've had or um, going out for a simple TV call. And I just watch these same families that were repeat, come back to these same homes every year. And you build that kind of relationship. Like, Oh, I know you from last year. I was here at the same property. And, you know, so, that's what puts the f smile on your face in this industry is going out to the property and um, watching the customers um, smile and be happy and um, coming back to the same location year after year. You dropped so many amazing little nuggets there and I want to touch on a number of them as we as we discuss here but do you think that um, for a small vacation rental company that's looking to hire great employees do you think that Jeannie's strategy of looking outside the industry for a specialist in a an adjacent space is a good way of looking at it if the existing pool seems limited of course yes I do I, I think that's that's the new way you know sometimes you can hire within, but I feel like you have to um, sometimes go out and look for your employees and, you know, and find those employees uh, that you're looking for and um, and hope you could find that right candidate. And, and just out of curiosity, with all of these years under your belt now, if you were to just move to an entirely new place and start a vacation rental company from scratch, how would you go about finding your housekeeping team, let's say? What I've learned in the housekeeping um, hiring phase of cleaners or inspectors, you know, you want to put a ad out on their hiring sites, your Indeed, your Monsters, uh, the different hiring sites. But sometimes to find that 
housekeeping uh, level, a cleaner status per se. Um, Craigslist has been a, a great attribute in our local area. Um, a lot of cleaners themselves are marketing and advertising themselves, listed them, listed their companies on all those sites. So I would say even Craigslist, something as a smaller platform, um, you could find a great candidate um, as well. Cool. I like that. You have uh, in these 17 years seen the industry change a great deal. You went from knowing basically nothing about vacation rentals to now knowing as much as anybody on the planet about how these things operate properly. Correct. What in, in hindsight do you think is the role of these processes or checklists that you brought with you in, in a way from your previous position what do you think is the role of these kind of processes in building a vacation rental company? What I learned when I came over that, you know, before the technology, the breezeways and all the other platforms, everything was paper based, handwritten, you know, a phone call, a text message, or even the simple Nextel, the little chirp phone communication. That's that was the way to communicate <laughs> back then. So I learned coming from the previous employer that I had what you had to have some kind of checklist. And when I came to my my job, we had a checklist, but it was simple. And I wasn't the manager, but I always tried to show and, and be involved and give my input. And I helped my current manager at the time when I got hired to create our checklist of things that um, we knew that we that we were getting complaints on. Um, things simple as clean under all beds. You know, we had on our paperwork that said, look under all beds. There were some that looked under the bed, but they didn't clean under all beds. They were like, I checked, but I didn't clean it. <laughs> That's right. So um, I feel that the checklist is mandatory. You know, you got to have that guideline. You got to have a standard appearance about your property. And I learned these things later on, too, as well, that um, you got to have standards in place. How do you want your property to look? Should your blinds be open or closed during your um, after your final inspection to the, to greet the guests coming in the door, should the curtains be pulled up or blinds open? Those are a way to greet that guest when they come into a, a nice beach view property. So just having those guidelines that you think's best for your company, uh, you need to have those in place, you know, starting with a standard procedure, um, how you want your property to look, and then also having a guideline of checklists for cleaners and inspector positions. After all of these years now of of refining, of honing these checklists within Newman Daily, um, can you walk us through sort of the the process, the chain of events that take place, the moment that a guest checks out, leading up to the moment that the next guest checks in? Because I'm guessing you have this thing down to like a science. Yeah. So for us, what we've created and what we'll touch on is um, we've invested in, in, in technology over the last several years now. And we went to keyless entry door locks, which is we use Point Central. So by having keyless entry, we give all of our guests a closing door code. So when that guest leaves that property and checks out, they must put a six digit closing code in that door. And when they do so, our corporate office reservations team get the notification and all of my cleaning staff, cleaners get the notification. So it could be at 4 a.m. and that housekeeper will get a text alert. Uh, the home boathouse has departed, for example. So now that cleaner has the option to wake up early to get a head start or they can sit in and wait to check out time. But most of our cleaners will we'll wake up early and get out here to get to work. We allow our contract cleaners to pack their linens and get their linens the night before on a big weekend, big Saturday check-in. So they will come on a Friday and get all their linens. So my cleaners will be ready to go in case that text message does happen where they can come out earlier, 6 or 7 a.m. and get that head start. I love that. It's like a signal. It'll go out and everyone's- It's a signal. So now they can alert all their teams. They can get positioned. They can get ready. Uh, and get there before 9 a.m. because our checkout time before COVID was 10 a.m. Uh, then we moved it to 9 a.m. after you know after COVID because we wanted to get that head start on our properties with the new procedures we put in place as well. So by getting that head start, so the cleaner goes in and cleans the property, then they put an exit door code in when they're done. And may I just ask a quick question? Um, would it be fair to say that prior to your Point Central installation, guests were checking out 
at 4 a.m. still, but only officially at 9 a.m. Were the, was the cleaning team coming in. That's right. You didn't know. So that 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 led us to be, and before that, we would have mostly keyed property. So every home had a key to get inside. So then guess what actually dropped their keys off to a lockbox at the corporate office on their departure. So then at 9 a.m. when the corporate office opens, they have to go through all these keys, then notify housekeeping that these units are out. You know, um, but on busy Saturdays in the old days, our employees would come there like at 7, 30, 8 a.m. to get an hour start by looking at the keys so they can signal housekeeping, which it, we still didn't get a big enough head start like we would want it to. After the cleaner puts their closing code and then the inspector is notified of that property, then that inspector knows now it's my time to get to this home, get it inspected thoroughly and ready for the next family coming in before check in. So when that inspector does their process, they put a final closing code in, and that is called the completion code. Reservations department and front desk get that notification. Now they can call that family that has paid for an early check-in that wanted to be in before four uh, that their property is ready. So that is the breakdown um, of the Point Central system and of our check-in system of how start to finish a property starts and how it ends by the final inspector going in, walking the property, getting it ready, making sure the TVs work, the cleanliness is there, uh, and then putting their door closing code in, in which that alerts the front desk office. In the old days, you would have to, these would all be phone calls. Cleaner goes in, I would call the cleaner from home and say, hey, your property is ready to clean, come on out to work. Mm -hmm. All those things have cut my time down of the communication of picking up the phone, making the phone call to the cleaner. Cleaner calls me when they're done. I call the inspector and say, inspector, now go to the property. Inspector does their job and they pick up the phone and call me. So all those phone calls stopped due to having the technology and a platform as a keyless entry door lock system, which is very beneficial in this industry. Folks, Point Central is literally the sponsor of this episode. And I can assure you, Eddie did not know that when I asked him the simple question, what happens between checkout and check-in? But this just goes to show how integral and powerful a tool like smart home automation can be to your business. And as a result of listener demand, Point Central is now accommodating managers with less than 25 properties. Hopefully Eddie's nudge is enough to get you to consider this type of tool in running a more efficient business. Head over to pointcentral.com slash VRMB. What, what I think is interesting, I like to envision this, uh, the metaphor or analogy of the data rate. That's the speed at which one computer trades information with another computer. And if your data rate is very high, you can download all kinds of things and watch all your streaming shows and be very pr uh, productive. But if your data rate is low, you could have the exact same things going on, but you don't actually get to do the things completed. And it sounds to me like a tool like that is simply speeding up the data rate, the communication between the, the stakeholders. That is correct. It does, it does increase the data rate. It does increase the productivity things do move along faster. Your guests are getting in on time. You, all those things are happening. You're not giving out discounts because someone didn't get in by 4 p.m. or your 5 p.m., whatever your check-in time is. So by getting that head start in a busy industry, even if you have 50 properties and you know not enough housekeepers to get the job done, by, by having something or some way that you knew that family left early and to get your cleaners in is very beneficial. So let's dive into the cleaning process itself a, a tiny bit, because this is a, a one of the most pivotal variables of the, the guest stay. Are there any specific products that you're really liking right now with it, within that time span that the housekeeping team is in there and doing their job? Yeah, the biggest thing for us, for cleaners and housekeeping is that on busy Saturdays, our laundry team, and our, we have we have our own laundry operation as well, they will help pack and make the bags for cleaners so their process is speeded up also 
to get out to the property to do their job effective. Um, also with COVID, we went out and researched some three products to utilize for disinfecting and sanitizing um, agents to, to clean our property better. You know, we use a product called Betco that kills norovirus and COVID virus in under, under two minutes, you know. So um, by having great products can also help speed up your job um, while you're out in the field doing your inspection and having the right tools um, in the cleaning, you know, from simple things as a magic eraser or stovetop cleaner to get the ring around the top of the eyes of the stove. So you have to have the right products as well in order to do your job efficient from a clean air standpoint and inspector standpoint. And we might as well take the opportunity because the other sponsor of this episode is Breezeway and you already mentioned them, but explain the role of Breezeway in that housekeeping uh, process. Yeah, the way Breezeway works, it, it cut the housekeeping manager's time down uh, drastically. And when I, my first year as a housekeeper manager, I would my owner operator, Gene Daly, will send me out to Verma, uh, association conferences, VRHP conferences. And, and as going to these conferences, I started to see technology companies 10 years ago come about, but the, the platform and the, it just didn't fit and look to what we wanted. So we just kept passing on and passing on all these things. So in the last five or maybe so years, Breezeway was at a conference. Uh, Jeremy and his team were at one of the conferences in Corinne, and they reached out to me and and we did a demo and I was like, Jeannie, this is it. This is what I've been dying to have. I would do, I would, I would actually make my schedule just with the pen and pad and a notebook and um, a printed departure schedule. And I would have to write these cleans down. And we average in a busy Saturday, 150 cleans in one day. I have some cleaners that will clean three properties to 20 properties. So I'm writing their name and all 20 units. Then I would have to text message them all those 20 that they have and not just one crew. I would have to text message probably 40 crews to do 150 cleans in one day. And that was time. That was a lot of my time in that desk, in that office. Now with Breezeway, when they came about and we purchased that, invested in it, we were able to implement and add our checklist that we created into their software platform. We were also able to utilize Breeze, Breezeway by putting property specific notes for certain properties. We have some homes where owners like certain knickknacks in certain places. We have some homes that um, require um, certain grill cleaning and certain things. Well, that inspector would have to remember those things or keep a notebook about this property. Now in Breeze, Breezeway, every unit is specific and you can add these details about this home. So that was the awesome thing about Breezeway. And then the back end of that, you're able to turn in your maintenance. It has a maintenance portal as well, cleaning portal, inspection portal, and a maintenance portal where you're able to communicate with all three departments that hone in and and that's the hub of the will for a vacation rental is housekeeping. So um, with the cleaning portal, housekeeping and maintenance, Breezeway had it all in one package where I could make a schedule, send it to my cleaner. The cleaner can go out and do their, the inspector can go out and do their job and check the home. Then if they find any maintenance, anything broken, uh, a leak or toilet issue, we would submit those maintenance tickets over through Breezeway through the re rental department. Then the rental manager will get the maintenance order and send out the maintenance vendor to fix the problem. So all those things are being taken care of in, with one software company, which is Breezeway. I can only imagine what would have been going through your head when you sat down for that demo. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was just, I was just blown away. I was blown away because you would have to, we would have to hire inspectors and we had to, with all the complaints we used to get 10 years ago and with owners coming in and saying, my blue comforter is not on my bed or my red vase is missing off the dining table. So we would have photo books almost for every particular home or property. So now those photo books reside in Breezeway. All those pictures of the inside of a home are in Breezeway. So if I'm a smaller company, you don't need a photo book anymore. You can purchase Breezeway and pull up that property and send that inspector in that home and say, hey, pull up those pictures. Everything in this property should be in these photos. And if it's not, report it to your property manager. So all those things have helped out drastically by having Breezeway. And that's coming from somebody who has worked with checklists 
a, a little checklist bit. for several years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> If you're someone who uses checklists, who views checklists equally as powerfully as Eddie does, head over to breezeway.io slash VRMB. When you sign up for their demo on that page, you'll also get a free implementation, which is valued at $1,000. That's breezeway.io slash VRMB. Eddie, how have um, guest demands changed in your in your view? Like, w- how do we accommodate these changes? Well, what we realize, guest demands have changed more. More requests from guests wanting things simple as towels, washcloths, extra sheets. All of our properties come with washers and dryers. And it seems like that I've realized in this last year that guests are wanting more for their money. They're wanting more service for their money that they're paying for these properties. It's not that they don't they don't have time to wash it. They just feel with well, the value of what they paid, someone should bring me more linens, more towels, et cetera. So in our company, our goal is if a guest call for any small request, we're going to bring it to you because we really strive on customer service, interacting with that guest. Even though they have a washer and dryer, we will never tell them, well, ma'am, sir, you have a washer and dryer on your property. Can you wash those 10 towels or four or five, that, that, those extra towels and you'll have some for the next day. We will rather bring you more of what you're asking for. So I think their demands are higher just due to the value um, of what they're paying. Like I said, with just with COVID itself. And could you elaborate on what you see the value of actually showing up physically interacting with these people is? Yeah. The value, you know, for them, to me, it's just that more guests are wanting more. They're wanting more for their for what they're paying for the property. Not just I purchased a nice home. They want someone to come out there to appease them for every issue. If it's a TV, if it's more linen, um, if it's a kitchen item that they're requesting more dishes, uh, they think that their value is important, which is it is. You know, the value is everything of that property. So, and we just strive on prompt service, getting there immediately to that guest demand or guest need. Um, depends on what that demand is. If it's something like a small appliance in a property, coffee pot, blender, toaster, we will bring that to that property immediately so that guests will be accommodated uh, for the things they need. And in terms of like speed, how how, how quickly are we talking? Our, our, our services, uh, if it's just a service of they, they're the guest's request, it's within an hour, you know, 30 minutes to an hour, we try to get there. Um, if it's a guest complaint, our goal is 25 to 45 minutes, uh, never over an hour necessarily for a guest cleaning complaint. If a guest calls and says, my floors are dirty, uh, hair is in a bathtub, we're going to get there in 25 to 45 minutes promptly. Um, just for the simple fact of repeat customer service base and appeasing that guest so they will rebook with us and they will not ask for a discount. We realized the faster we got there, the guest started to ask for discounts after the fact we corrected their pro- their issue. So we realized when, once, once their issue is corrected, they never call back. You don't hear from them. We do give a follow-up call just to make sure they were okay and satisfied. But uh, we realized the discount aspect, guests were asking for less discounts um, after we came out to the property. Um, but what we realized, part of that demand now, when there is a guest complaint, that most guests now with COVID will not let us enter the property. They will make the complaint and say, we've already taken care of it due to COVID. We don't want anyone in the home. That has been our biggest challenge and obstacle at this point, because that's something that we thrived on was customer service, making the guests happy, appeasing the guests. And at this point, that's been a challenge for this industry. And I think for our company and probably others as well, where most families now for that same simple uh, hair in a tub or sandy floor, we cannot correct that issue if a family will not let us in the property. Um, our reservationists have been pushing hard and t- letting guests know that we do come in with PPE um, gear, our gloves and mask on. And we've been telling guests, you don't have to be home. You can leave the property. We'll come out, take care of your issues for you. Um, and we still had some that will say, no, we've already taken care of it, or no, we don't want anyone in our property. So that has been one of the biggest demands and biggest challenges for us. Interesting. Um, there's also been uh, some discussions on VRMB communities about the rising 
demands of guests. And in some cases, I think I saw the phrase arms race. Like, are we creating an arms race to impossibly spoiled vacation rental guests? Do you think there's a limit that we have to draw at some point? I think there is a limit, but I also think this is becoming more competitive. Uh, like I said, you know, over 10 years ago in our in our local market area, there there was a there was quite a few rental management companies, but now there's more. There's more on the rise. It seems like everyone now wants to open a vacation rental company. Every week you drive down the road, here's this new van of a new company that's out there. So you have to keep up with the trend. I'm realizing I'm realizing that you have to compete compete in this industry for your for your rate for the value. Um, all those things are playing a, a big factor now in this industry. Um, I think the guests are in control at this point because there's so many other companies they could choose from to go to now. You know, before there was maybe 10, you know, the companies on the same level. Now there's probably 15, 20 in our local market area that, that are doing the exact same thing, you know, but it's about your brand. It's about the customer service and what your company has to offer. I, th I do think the guest demands are, higher and we do need to set some kind of limit um i do think the new curve guests will want more um just due to COVID. i think they're going to start wanting what they see in stores now you know you go to walmart you see in the, instead of your pot and pan section now you see instapots and greaseless fryers i think that's going to be the next trend guests are going to start requesting and wanting those things in their rental property mm -hmm. And is that because these are new guests that have these expectations or is it just the evolution of our uh, our classic guests? I think it's mostly the new travelers, the new guests. Um, I think our new guest percentage have went up over the last two years. Um, we, we, we strive hard on repeat customer retention, repeat customer 100% um, satisfaction rating of our clients and customer base that we book with. But I do think our new clientele has risen, um, which will be a big factor of the new curve, the new wave of this industry. I never even used an air fryer myself, but now I'm thinking that my next vacation rental might have one. It's a possibility. It's a possibility. <laughs> you know, most used to have crock pots and went from a crock pot now to an instant pot, you know? Right, right. Um, so I just think those will be the new the new things. It went from a normal coffee pot to a curry. It went from a single station curry now to a curry combo. You know, we're convincing owners at some of our properties now to purchase the Keurig combo. It's one set. You got the Keurig maker, then you got a coffee pot on one side, you know. Um, so you got to you gotta stay ahead of the curve, I believe, now in this industry. You got to keep up with the time. And all the homes on your rental program, they need to have some kind of standard of what should be in a property, uh, a small appliance-wise, decorative-wise, et cetera. And how do you guys handle something like a complaint? Like what's the troubleshooting process internally? Internally, the complaint goes to our reservations department. They will, our property manager, they will take the complaint either through the track uh, SMS system in, or they will take it by a phone call. Depends on what the complaint is. If it's a maintenance issue, it might get turned over to our, our maintenance department. But all guest complaints are tracked and goes in our breezeway system. One of my biggest things I strive on is how many guest arrivals we have for the day or week versus how many complaints we have. So by utilizing Breezeway, we're able to make a title that says guest complaint. So any guest complaints that comes in, the title of that complaint, it should target guest complaint, then put in the description what that complaint is. So it goes internally to the corporate office. Then they put every complaint in Breezeway, which housekeeping gets that complaint. If it's cleaning, uh, if it's like, even if it's maintenance, we get the complaint. We'll send someone from the housekeeping department to go out there to look into the complaint to see if it's something that we can take care of in a timely manner. If it's a maintenance issue, then we will turn that complaint ticket over to a maintenance ticket. We will put a comment in Breezeway that says uh, maintenance is needed. TV fell off the wall or whatever the case may be. So now from housekeeping complaint over to a maintenance complaint because housekeeping couldn't fix the problem. And then how do you ensure that the problem doesn't happen again? Well, the biggest thing is for that problem not happen again. If it's a cleaning issue, you know, housekeeping wise, myself as a manager will speak to the cleaner, um, to the inspector. If it's something regarding cleaning, 
to let them know, hey, pay attention to this. This family complained that when they checked in, their patio deck was sandy. There was a beer can on the patio deck. Please pay attention to that. You know, you know, you got to have some kind of standard. You got to have accountability. So those are the first two things we will do is talk to those two parties, the cleaner versus inspector, and let them know what they miss so they can improve on that. You know, and then my manager skills, you know, what I've just had to work on is letting them know. You know, because all complaints come through me. So I, I get the pressure first, you know, and I get the talking to first. So then I have to work on training my team so it doesn't happen again. Love that. Sounds like you've thought about this for a couple <laughs> a couple minutes. Yeah. Um, speaking of team, uh, I think that, that the back of the house, as some people refer to it, housekeeping is um, not always fully recognized it's certainly not a topic that gets enough discussion in our industry, but I think as professionals, we all need and want connection and recognition, especially in this industry where the, where the output is actually a memory that's created for a guest for their lifetime. How does Newman Daily and, and your team, how do you reward housekeepers for doing good work? Well, first, our cleaners at Newman Daily in our local area are all subcontractors. So our cleaners are licensed business owners, LLC or incorporated. So when I train or hire them, I, I, I explain to them first, you are a business. You are equivalent and equal to New Mendeley Resort Properties. Even if you have two employees or 20 employees, you are a business, you are a business owner. So even though that they're subcontractors and they do not work directly under or for New Mendeley Resorts, they are a subcontractor. So what I do yearly for them after every summer season, we do a housekeeper appreciation where I do a cookout for them, burgers, hot dogs. Every single season, we give out gift cards and raffles to the cleaners to show how hard they work and appreciate all these guys that work for us. Also, I do a yearly orientation every March before season kicks off and I do the same thing. I appreciate all the previous cleaners that work for me. And I give every single one a gift card in front of all the new ones that are coming on board so they can see how much we give and appreciate our cleaners. Even though they're subcontractors, we still appreciate them. Um, every December, around before Christmas, our owner, we give all of our contractors, all of our primaries that have been here with us for over two years or more, the ones we continue bringing back, we give them all a Christmas gift card yearly. Is that like a, like a credit card that has money on it? Yeah. We give them all a Visa or American Express, some type of uh, gift card every Christmas, just to show that we appreciate them and thank you for all you do, even though they come out and do yearly deep cleans. And another way I reward them, all the ones that do a really good job on Saturday and Sunday, and I reward them by giving them more work. The better cleaners, they make more than others because they clean more. So if a Wednesday, I have like five departures on a Wednesday, I'm going to give it to Miss Brenda because Miss Brenda has been doing a fabulous job at the home she's been taking care of for me. So that's another way that I try to reward my top cleaners by just keeping them busy, giving them extra units when I can. And I keep the same cleaners in the exact same properties because they can help keep an eye on that unit. They can do the extra things needed. If I clean the fans to this week, I don't have to clean the fans probably next Saturday because I know I got all that dust off. And one thing that cleaners like, they like repetition and being in, in that exact same property. Uh, they know what the property looks like. They can help keep an eye on certain things. So when they're rewarded by doing another home, they really appreciate that. I think that's such a brilliant piece of advice for the vacation rental industry as a whole, because our biggest challenge in a way in, in cleaning standards is that every single property is different and it is hard to just make a catch all checklist. You know, some do have these nuances and, and really the only way to scale that is to put one person on one property, get to know it intimately. And, and ultimately that's the only way to do it. Right. That is it. That is so true. Um, yeah. So we put one company over, these four properties, you know, either they clean themselves and they end up training their workers and we can communicate effectively with that. And also our cleaners 
can actually comment in Breezeway when something's broken or missing. So they will alert us as well through Breezeway that there is something not on that property or there's something missing or broken. So by putting someone new in that home, they're not going to know that above the master bed, there was a blue beach scene picture frame. But that private cleaner, that, that primary housekeeper that cleans it every week, she's going to know something's missing above that bed. Mm. Love that. Um, how do you keep the team as a group, like the whole the whole chain of, of command? How do you keep them all kind of on the same page and working together? One thing that I really pr- promote and I've learned since I've been with Newman Daily was just teamwork. Once I realize, you know, 10 years ago, my owner operator, Jeannie Daly, worked so close with me in housekeeping. She would come out and work every Saturday on a busy season in my office to navigate, to try to facilitate any calls coming in, to make sure she's checking off all the units that we have ready and letting front desk know. That freed me up to go out in the field to help my team. So by my team seeing the manager and the owner operator out helping on a busy Saturday, that will that will that will that will really encourage them to do a better job to know they got the support that everyone is working really hard in this industry in our department to get the job done so if we have an owner checking in my goal as a team is to send two inspectors to walk that home either together on the time time permits or If someone checks it today, another person checks it tomorrow. But my goal is to always have two sets of eyes or four sets of eyes on our owner arrival or VIP inspection. Um, The same with the housekeeper. If I know the housekeeper is doing an owner turn, I'm going to get that inspector there a little sooner so they can help and interact with the cleaner to help get that property done. And our housekeepers really appreciate that the inspectors do show teamwork and get to the property to help them bring back dirty linens. If they're short a sheet set or missing some towels out of the linen bag, instead of them driving back to the laundry facility, the inspector will bring those things to that cleaner. And the cleaners really pre- appreciate that teamwork and that effort. But it always, it starts from chain of command. It starts from the top, the owner, our vice president, um, housekeeping. And, and one thing that our company strives on in our culture is just big, and teamwork and, and customer service and dedication. The the vacation rental managers and owners that I've seen that really do well seem to have a really strong physical presence in the company. And it's not to say that the, the ones that are perhaps remote owners um, are that much different, but I do sense that when you're physically there and you're showing people that you're committed, you're doing things the right way, you're helping, as opposed to being maybe located elsewhere, it it really does just creates a culture almost, right? Correct. And I think we do. We have a strong culture within our, with our company. And I think that's something that I've kind of heard from upper management at times. The reason why we got a new property on our rental program, because this other homeowner never seen this person or could even meet this person and they wouldn't come out to 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 handle their issue in a timely manner so that's one thing that we wanted to set ourselves different from others was to be prompt have prompt service teamwork and great customer service and if you just quick hypothetical if you had like let's say one property you owned one property and it was here in florida and you didn't live necessarily close to it what would you do if you wanted to have that that same effect. Would you make trips regularly? If I was a homeowner? Yeah. If I was a homeowner, I, I would try to come down uh, to a minimum, you know, it depends where I was located, you know, four to six times a year. Um, we do have quite a bit of owners that come down a lot, you know, sometimes to do minor maintenance, to come with their family to visit, sometimes just to check on their property, to add, some touch up paint on the wall, because I feel like as a homeowner, you need to see your property as well. You need to know what's going on. You need to be involved um, in to keep up with the rental market. You got to that every house is competing with the next on our program. So I would want my house to be um, granite countertops or nice countertops, you know, all my walls painted, you know, free of scuff marks and those type of things. And I think the homeowner needs to come down a few times a year just so they can make sure their property is adequate. It's looking to standards 
Um, it's welcoming to guests that wants to book their property and you can market the property. Because what I realize if that property is not up to a standard or doesn't have a certain, certain look or not welcoming on the inside, it reflects the cleaning. I've been out to several complaints where the guest said the home's dirty and you get in there and you're like, ma'am, sir, what's dirty about it? Well, it just looks dirty. But what's dirty? Well, look at the wall that needs painted. Well, that's not housekeeping. You know, that's not cleaning. Folks, if your ears are perking up at this moment in the interview, you realize that Eddie's put his finger on something really powerful, a way to define your magic zone or sweet spot. Proximity. It's getting close to the issue in order to do it best. Sometimes this proximity is physical, like literally being on site and present with your team to build that culture. Another way, proximity is figurative. You can ask somebody to go to the problem in order to truly understand it. Listen on to exactly how Eddie does this. I like to, and my department likes to go to every single complaint because some of those complaints happen where it's vague, where someone will call and say, the house is dirty. And you're like, what's dirty? They don't give enough details to the reservation department. So we would have to go out there and figure out what's the problem, you know, because the worst thing as a housekeeper manager, you don't want all these complaints under your umbrella. So that was one reason I wanted to start, I started tracking the complaints and track in our breezeway system so we could improve, have a tool that help us minimize and these complaints can get lesser each each year. And uh, over these 17 years, you said 17, right? 17, yes, sir. That's crazy. You're, you're closing in on two decades of vacation rental experience. It's crazy. <laughs> um, what has, what have you like, what's the biggest thing you've learned or what has like surprised you in all those years? One of the biggest things I've learned in the past 15 to 20 years um, while manage a housekeeping department, you, you know, you just got to promote teamwork. Teamwork to me is, is everything because I realized my first couple of years, I tried to do it by myself and realized that I would forget or would want to go to every call and wanted to do it all. And I realized, you know what? I forgot to get this done. I can't do it all. I need help. I need a team. So that's one thing in my early career, I just wanted to promote teamwork and, and it's been a success ever since, you know, the vacation rental company doesn't succeed without a poor housekeeping department. The housekeeping department is what holds it all together. Like we're the hub. Like you said, you know, people don't see us as much out in the field. We don't get the recognition sometime in that department here or there, but you know, what the biggest thing is the cleanliness, the standards, they all have to be met for a guest to check in that property. And if those things aren't met, then that guest are going to want a discount. They're never going to book with us ever again and we lose that customer. So by having teamwork, you can assure yourself that you're going to have quality, clean, good cleans, great inspections, and you pretty much can get your staff to do anything you ask because they see that there's a manager or someone in place doing exactly what, what you're asking them to do. Mm. I think you just described team in a very similar way um, that I understood technology and that if you're using it properly and you're really doing all the right things, it frees up your time to do the things that you're best at, or as Jeremy from Breezeway likes to say, the things that you will get credit for in the eyes of the guests. Maybe that's showing up. Maybe that's a little handwritten note. These little touches that remind folks that you are human and a family business, right? That is correct. I just realized also that the employee, you know, is a major representation of the company. It's, it's our culture. When you put that Newman Daily shirt on whatever company you work for, you put that shirt and your name tag on, you represent the company. So however you act or represent out there by with the customer or with the owner, they're going to believe that company is the exact same way you are or you show them. You show them, you know, compassion and empathy and all these things. When there is a complaint, then they're going to know this is a great company, you know, to work for, to be a, to be a part of, to come stay with their vacation with. Eddie, when we think forward, like where this industry is going, um, are there any ideas that you've been mulling over, uh, unique or different thoughts that you think might be worth sharing with folks in terms of the direction that the vacation rental movement is heading? Um, 
Yeah, just one idea that I have. I just believe that the future of the vacation rental industry um, is growing. It's ever growing. Yeah. I just suggest that all vacation rental companies, everyone to be ready, be ready for that change, be ready to accommodate more families to come to your area, to come to your area, to vacate, to have a vacation, uh, to bring that that first new family to a beach home or a beach property. Um, you got to be ready. And what I mean by be ready is when something like COVID happens, you got to have a plan. You got to have an emergency plan. In our area, we have a lot of hurricanes. You got to have a hurricane prevention uh, team or something in place to be ready for those things. So when this new curve of all these new families want to go on vacation, your properties need to be clean, ready to go uh, up to standards. Um, Your homes need to be adequate, have TVs in every bedroom. All those things play a big factor in that customer coming back to stay with you. So I just feel that vacation rental industry it's, it's ever growing i have it we haven't been losing properties we're steady getting more properties new owners on our program so i just feel that with the growing industry your company has to be ready to a change and adapt um and with with COVID, you know all of our homes used to have individuality where every home had a different color comforter on the beds etc well we had to make some changes. We had to standardize. We had to get rid of all the comforters and go with one neutral color, uh, white comforter for all beds and all bedding so we could make sure they're washed every clean and taken care of because we seen that there was going to be a change. We knew that change was going to come. Um, We have sanitized um, stations on every wall and all of our properties because we want the guests to have a peace of mind. And your company has to be willing to make that change. Even if it's going to cost money, you got to be willing to adapt and change to, to get, to greet and to have that customer come vacation with you. What an amazing interview. In fact, together with the team, we discussed this conversation and how overdue it's been for a number of days after the call. And instead of the normal outro, in which we ask you to write a review, which pretty much nobody ever does anyway, or share this podcast with friends, I wanted to pose to you three discovery questions to get you thinking more critically about your housekeeping and laundry. Number one, what dead zones do properties exhibit at your vacation rental business? These are the hours or the days in which if you had a magic wand, that property could and probably should be ready for more guests. Demand for properties is exploding right now, and if you haven't experienced more demand, you will sometime soon. One way to grow from this demand is acquiring inventory, but the other way is simply eliminating these dead zones, optimizing your housekeeping processes so that teams can be more efficient Identify whether you've got any of these dead zones, and that's a first step to moving forward. Number two, have you considered subcontracting licensed business owners as opposed to full-time employees? This is a strong way to build independence about your teammates and to create a leaner business structure with less pressure on your shoulders. Channel Eddie's wisdom that you cannot do everything on your own. Which brings me to my third question. What else can you delegate? As Eddie says, we need other people on our team who can help. And that means parting ways with some income, but it also means a more sustainable business. Your ability to foster a team environment among these people is directly correlated with the value of your vacation rental business. The more teammates who can do the job without you, the more valuable your business is on the open market. Build your vacation rental business as if you'll own it forever, but could sell it tomorrow. If you enjoyed these questions and would like help critically addressing them within your business, consider becoming part of VRMB's Inner Circle community. It's a private community of the world's most creative vacation rental professionals. We are refining these solutions in real time and we're doing it together. You don't need anything to join other than a sincere desire to do things within your business the right way. Head over to community.vrmb.com and click register.